Before we go into GA4 and start talking about engagement rate in technical terms, I want you to remember one thing. Engagement is a session characteristic in GA4. So a single user can perform a engaged session one day and then completely disengaged session another day. GA4 basically takes all the sessions that they deem engaged and divide them by the total number of sessions and that's how they count engagement rate as a percentage. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about what does GA4 uh, look for when they try to understand whether a session is engaged or not? Because number one, we want to know how to adjust some parameters. And number two, we want to know how to interpret the numbers that we get. Because some things are flexible, but some are just there and we have to deal with them the way the GA4 is uh, presented to us. Let's go into the browser and talk about engagement rate in GA4. So let's perform a search for, let's say, behavior flow in GA4. Okay, I already knew that Data Driven U offers the number one result for that particular search. But if we click on this result and land on the website, here is how GA4 would consider this session to be engaged one. There are three major parameters the GA4 looks after. Uh, number one, it's if a session has more than one page view, it would be considered an engaged one. Another one would be if a session included a conversion in it, and we'll get to that in just a second here. And the third one would be the duration of the session. So if you're active on the page for more than a particular amount of time, by default, it's 10 seconds, but you will see where you can adjust that in GA4 so it can fit your uh, website uh, characteristics. Let's go step by step. So actually, if I click here and take a look at another blog post, even though I do it in a time span of two seconds, this session in particular would be considered an engaged one in GA4. As I said, another characteristic that the GA4 looks after is actually a conversion. So if we go to admin uh, panel of GA4 and take a look at all the events that have been set as conversions in this particular property, you will see that either a download of GA4 migration checklist or a video progress, if happened on the website, this session would be considered an engaged one regardless of the fact how long does it last. The third parameter that I mentioned is accessed via data stream characteristics. So there are a couple of clicks that you need to perform. Basically, you go find your uh, tag, then configure the tag settings, wait until it loads, show all the settings, and here it is at the very bottom, adjust session timeout. As you can see, data-driven new website has been primed to expect people to spend 30 seconds on the website for the session to be considered a engaged one, but default is 10. As you see, G4 says a session becomes an engaged one if it lasts longer than a certain amount of time. Default threshold for engagement time is 10 seconds, but this can be adjusted. Unfortunately, you cannot pick a time that you want. You can either choose from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 seconds, but it still gives you some flexibility to tell Google Analytics for how do you want it to treat visitors or actually sessions. The engagement itself is a very important characteristic in GA4 and it actually got its own section here in the lifecycle collection, which is a default one from GA4. But if you want to focus on engagement rate, you uh, need to look for it in session-based reports. One of them is traffic acquisition, definitely. And as you can see here, we're looking at uh, default channel grouping here as dimensions, and there it is uh, session count, there is engaged session count, and engagement rate here, which you can actually get if you divide engaged sessions by sessions itself. So that's a percentage of all the sessions that have been engaged. 
Now, if you uh, look at these numbers here, you need to understand that they represent the number of all the sessions that had either two page views or a conversion. In this case, it's video progress or a, a GA4 migration download. Or a person spent more than 30 seconds on the website. For your particular case, it's going to probably be something different. And as you can probably guess, this percentage here is heavily impacted by number of conversions that you have on your website. So, for example, if we prime this account to deem a scroll as a conversion, then you will inflate this number pretty quickly. One thing to note here, when you look at events reports in the engagement section itself, is to understand that unlike in GA3, uh, where you actually had all the interactions with the website that made your uh, session not to be a bounce, in this case, for example, a scroll itself, or a click, or even a file download, if you haven't marked it as a conversion, it would not make your session per se engaged one, even though obviously file download would be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easy to say that a file download is something that makes a session an engaged one. It's not by default. So engagement rate as a metric is influenced by three things. Sessions that had more than one page view, sessions that had a conversion, or sessions that lasted longer than a default period of time, or the one that you set via data stream characteristics. I hope that you find this video useful. If you do, please click like and subscribe to our channel so you can help us to make more of these videos. And see you soon with a, another GA4 topic.